Welcome to church. Here at Hope you are a multicultural family church in varsity lakes on the Gold Coast. No matter what you are facing right now, where you are from or language you speak, we want to welcome you. We are a home away from home for people all over the world in all walks of life. Our heart is to be the voice of hope in our community, a safe place for people to heal and experience their hope restored. We hope you enjoyed this message. We're going to go to uh, 1 John 1, so grab your Bibles out. In preparing for this message, it's interesting when when Norico comes up and shares a piece of scripture or something, you know you're on the right track if God has spoken to you in the same way, right? So God has actually been speaking to me this morning about creating me a clean heart. And this message is really a, a, a heart message, a message for you to really digest for yourselves. It's, you'll think of other people that maybe need this message. That's great. That's, that's wonderful. But I want you to absorb it today for yourselves, into your own hearts, because it is creating me a clean heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. And that really started resonating, and I love how Noriko got up and, and started to talk about exchange, this beautiful exchange that, that God actually gives us his heart, his supple heart towards others. But over time, calluses can start forming in our lives, difficulty, struggles, where people have hurt us. We become embittered or bitter towards situations, circumstances, or people even. And then calluses start forming in our hearts. And so that's why I really want us to receive this message into your hearts because I believe that's where the healing needs to start first, in your heart. So... Is that okay? Yeah. So the Holy Spirit's going to speak. You're going to think about a whole heap of other people, but I really want you to take this on board. And we've been um, enjoying a time of reflecting on what prayer looks like for us as individuals. And so Pastor Wayne talked about, you know, the model of prayer, the, the prayer that Jesus then gave to the disciples they call it the Lord's Prayer, but really it's the disciples' prayer, right? And it's our prayer today, not to be modelled in a religious fashion, but certainly out of a relationship. And then we were encouraged to know that we should not come away without anything of God when we come to Him in prayer. And so we receive His peace. And so I hope you've been enjoying in your prayer times recently this peace that transcends all understanding. And last week we talked about how we need to continue to have a connection to God through a move of the Holy Spirit every single day, not just in the morning, not just in the evening, even though that's wonderful time to pray, but also throughout the day and making connection to him so we can be guided and directed and receive the portion that we need in that moment rather than going to the end of the day and realize I missed something of God. And so I don't want us to miss this. When we come to God in prayer, we come for many different reasons. We come to worship him. We come to thank him. We come to ask for things for ourselves. We also petition on behalf of others. But what's really unique and, and what I want us to receive in our hearts today is that we can confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. We can confess our sins and ask for his forgiveness. So I'm reading from 1 John 1 and I'm going to start in verse 5. I'm going to go all the way through to 1 John 2 verse 2. Okay, here we go. This is a message we heard from him and declare it to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he, that's Jesus, is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his, his son, purifies us from all sin. Amen? Amen? If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, 
we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. And hear these words, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the anointed sacrifice for our sin and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Isn't that incredible? That, that verse just sums up the whole of the gospel, the whole of the good news for us, that he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, that we have been liberated, we can walk in freedom, we no longer have to be chained to our sins, but if we do sin, he is there. He is there, seated at the right hand of the Father and petitioning for us. Isn't that great news? And so there's one verse I want to drill down to today, and that's 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and pure us, purify us from all unrighteousness. So I suppose you're wondering, what is sin? Well, I think Noriko has mentioned it a number of times. The same basic meaning is in the Hebrew and the Greek, which means to miss the mark. So when we're actually referring to the archer pulling back the arrow in the bow and letting it go, can you imagine? One right now. Right across. Okay, I didn't hit anybody. That's the wall, all right? But it's saying missing the mark. When I, when I let loose the arrow, it misses the mark. And it's not talking about missing the bullseye. It misses the whole target altogether. Do you feel like that sometimes? No, don't lift your arm up. Maybe lift your neighbor's arm up for them on their behalf. <laughs> no, don't do that. So this is shooting an arrow, missing the target. And that target, you might want to know, is actually us being Christ-like. Becoming more like Christ. Are we hitting that target or are we missing it entirely? And it all stems from the original sin that we find in Genesis. The original sin is actually doubting God at his word and not acting according to his instructions. And Romans 3.23 reminds us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the really important question here is, how does that shape our prayer? When we come to God in prayer, how should that shape then the prayers that we're giving when we are asking for God's help? We can also ask for his help in this area too. And we should. So the first bit is that if we confess our sins, do you notice the if that's there? <laughs> Right? If. Because sometimes we aren't likely to admit that it is sin. Right? So we're confessing our sins to God in prayer. And according to what we've already learned, it's missing the mark. And we're not just talking outwardly. We're also talking inwardly. Something thought or felt. And... Sins can also be commission, an acted out sin, or omission. Those things that we should do and didn't do, like forgiving one another. <laughs> so, confession starts with God first. And we get a wonderful illustration of this with David, where he sins and, and takes Bathsheba, into his bed and he says to the Lord but before you and you alone Lord I have sinned he confesses his sin to God you think that he's going to do everything out here right fix all the problems that he's caused no he says my connection to you God is the one that needs to be restored first and foremost and so that's why we need to confess our sins to God first and foremost yes we can confess our sins to one another I will get to that but confessing our sins to God so that he can make our relationship right again. And that's so important because that's where everything flows from. If we try and fix everything out of here and we haven't fixed anything with him, then this is all going to be an epic failure. I have been there, trust me. 
Oh, that's good. My wife didn't say amen. (laughs) That's important in these times, you know. So you need to ask yourself, has your sin affected those around you? Even if it is an internal thing, it affects the way we behave, our thoughts, our speech. And if we're truly honest with ourselves, we would say, yes, it does. And guess what? 9.99999 recurring times out of 10, it does affect those that are around about you. And it affects the most important relationship that you have with anyone, which is with God. And so when we feel distanced or separated from God, you have to ask yourself, what is distancing me? Because he is always close. He is always wanting to draw near. What have I put in place that I should remove from its place and replace it with something that is better? And where do we find something that is better? It is God's word that helps us there. He helps us to digest what is better, what we should focus ourselves on. And I really think it's important because healing is available for each and every one of us today. And that's why I'm asking you to take on this message. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart those areas that you may have hidden away from other people that God is now nudging into, these spaces, saying, hey, I want to bring healing. I want to be in wholeness. I want you to confess that to me. Confession is where we start. And of course, James 5.16 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Isn't that wonderful news? It's that we may be healed from what we are experiencing together. If I have hurt you in any way, may there be healing in that situation. May there be healing over that in Jesus' name. And so when I confess, look, I think I've hurt you. I think I've disappointed you. Then we invite God in to be the healer in that space rather than pushing each other away. And because a continual relationship, not just with God, but also amongst ourselves, the brothers and sisters in Christ, cultivates through honesty, purity, and it reflects this wonderful thing called oneness. Have you heard of it? What other people call unity. It is the oneness that is in the, the body of Christ. And it is embodied within every single church. It is on display for everyone to see how do we love each other when we have hurt each other. The difficulties, the struggle, the pain. It's real. I'm not saying it's not real. It is real. But we need healing from it. For the church to be effective in such a time as this, we need healing. Oh, is it okay? Amen. Not too sure. And it is yours to receive. If you would just ask and confess your sin and ask for his help, ask for his healing. And I love how confession is something that we shouldn't just do on one occasion. I mean, I've seen many movies. Have you seen the movies? The confessional box, right? You sit in the box and you slide open the window. You've seen those movies, haven't you? It's almost like you have to put in a coin and then the window opens, right? No, right. So it slides open, right? And you go, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Who knows those movies, right? Yeah. Yeah, Godfather. (laughs) I killed my brother. (laughs) Right? So sliding that window open, confessing to the person on the other side. Ah, Actually, that tradition came out of Ireland, did you know? Uh, It's because they took this scripture literally on every single sin that you ever did, you confess to one another. I'm not telling you that. Confess it to God. If you've hurt a brother and sister, go to them and confess that to them. But they took it literally, right? So they're sitting down and they're talking to everybody about every single sin in their life. And of course, gossip was born. (laughs) And the, the, uh, the people that were looking after the, 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 let's call them pastors, the fathers of Ireland looked at it and went, oh, this is not a good thing. There's a lot of gossip going around and we know what Mary did last night because she told everybody. Oh, my goodness. You know? 
And so then they came up with this little room. So it wasn't a box. And so attached to the church, and they actually find it in the archaeological digs, they've got this tiny little room, and in Ireland it is the first place that you find it. Right? This tiny little room, and they sit in the room and they talk, and they go, really, it should just be one person hearing this. <laughs> You've got to find the right person to hear all that, right? <laughs> And so when we confess that we have wronged someone, it brings about an opportunity for us, just like it says in Matthew 18. If someone has sinned against you, go to them and try and reconcile. That is the whole reason for it, confessing your sin to one another. And it's also to receive healing. That's what it says in Scripture. Healing healing needs to come into the space. If healing is not coming, then there's something wrong. Maybe it's your connection with God. And maybe someone here today just needs to reconnect right now. Right across this place, in your hearts. Yeah, I've held on to that way too long. Yeah, I need that healed in my life, Lord. That situation, it's years ago, but it keeps on coming up. What is it? Help me with it. And may Jesus heal you right now. May the Holy Spirit move in your heart, replacing Whatever it is, that fear, that bitterness, that anxiety, with peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be upon you. The Holy Spirit is speaking peace right now into people's hearts. Right now, right across the place. Right across the place. Receive that peace. Receive it. So does it end in confession? Well, the little box says no. <laughs> little box says no. How Mary's, our fathers, all these wonderful things, right? <laughs> you remember the movie? Well, they, they put that in place for this whole idea of repentance. What does that look like? Repentant. It is a heart's concern. And so this repentance is a, a heart posture towards God. And confession moves to repentance when we acknowledge that we've sinned in the first place. If we confess our sins, yes, I confess my sin. He is faithful. Hey, hey how good's that? He is faithful and just and will forgive me, but he's also in the business of purification. That wonderful work, that sanctification that's happening in our lives, that God is bringing us to his word, we don't go away the same. It changes us, it rearranges us. Confessing our sin is exactly the same. And that's why we need to confess our sins before the Lord so that he can shape us and mold us more into the likeness of Christ. So if you know you've missed the mark... That's where confession moves to repentance. God, I acknowledge that I've caused damage to my relationship with you. And I'm not trying to deceive myself in this moment, thinking that I've hurt no one. I've hurt my relationship with you, Jesus. And I don't want to miss this mark again. I don't want to return to this again. I don't want to do this again, the same sinful behavior. Help me, Jesus. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your peace. I need your wisdom. And that's why the apostles' prayer, the disciples' prayer, if you want to call it the Lord's prayer, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We know that temptation will come time and time again, but it is in our submission that James talks about, our submitting to God that we can then resist the enemy and he then flees not from me, but from God who is much bigger. Amen? Then my failings and my sin, my shortcomings... And this repentance that happens in my heart 
We know that 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. We need our communities healed in Jesus' name. And I believe that healing needs to start here in churches, local churches, right across the Gold Coast, right across Australia. Healing needs to flow from these houses from his church into the community. And if we are not healed, if we are still broken, if we are still holding on to things of the past, then we're not going to be able to flow rivers of living water into our communities. So ask God to help. (laughs) It's simple, isn't it? The most simple prayer. Purify us from all unrighteousness. I need your help because nothing is pure in me. I'm not trying to tell you I have this all together. I certainly do not. I need to come to God and say, purify me from this unrighteousness because I want to be a better ambassador for your kingdom wherever I go. And ask God for that wonderful transformation that happens from inside, not on the outside, not making it look like I've got it all together. That's not what Sundays are all about. We need to spur and encourage one another along. We need to find ourselves in God's word and allow it to change our lives so that on Sundays we're ready to go. Ready to go. Here I am. I am just so thankful, Lord, (laughs) for the wonderful difference you are making already in my life. If you're coming on Sundays and saying, God, you're going to have to make a difference today, but uh, forget Monday through to Saturday. I'm I'm just too busy. (laughs) It's an everyday thing. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's a day by day prayer. God, help me. It's the easiest prayer I've ever prayed and I pray it all the time. You might even hear me say it around the church. God help me. (laughs) And I'm not looking at you, anybody right now. I'm not looking at you. (laughs) God help me. God help me, not you. That's why this message is for you and not the person sitting beside you. You might think it's unique for them. Boy, they need to hear it, don't they? (laughs) It's actually for you. Because that forgiveness is something that you then receive. And it's something that we then hold dear. And we understand its value because of who we are and we're real with ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I've got a sniff of that. It's not too great. Nobody will want to cuddle me. So when we confess and we say, I'm going to do something with your help about it, Lord. It starts with us, and I'm going to work it out here with other people. So I will confess any sin that I have against other people, involved other people, and I will, Lord, change, be rearranged by your word. I will turn away from my self-centered behavior, and I will turn towards God. That's what repentance is. Turning away from my self-centeredness and turning back to God. It's a 180. It's not difficult. I know those wonderful signposts, right? Repent. The kingdom is nigh. Probably scares a lot of people, right? When you have a look at what's happening around the world, repent. Kingdom is nigh, right? They look at it and they go, whoa, what does that mean? It's a religious word. They don't like it anymore. Saying repent, people go, oh, no, no. I know somebody else that needs to repent, but not me. All it means is moving away from what has distracted you, your self-centeredness, and coming back to God, who is truth and love and grace and wisdom and peace and all the things that you need. I mean, am I trying to sell it to you right now? Probably. Shall we get the band back? Yeah, that's a good idea. So as we continue with this whole idea, this attitude of repentance. The Holy Spirit is there to comfort us. And in that moment, we then 
turn. And we turn in the Lord's Prayer. And it says, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others for their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Sobering. Sobering. This is God's truth. If you are offended, take it up with him. It is his word. So what does it mean? As much as I have been forgiven, I need to forgive others. I'm not saying that you're condoning bad behavior. I'm not saying that it won't hurt and that you won't Remember it. But when it comes to the surface, and it does, again and again, you forgive. Did you get that? As it comes to the surface again and again, forgive again and again. And you'll find this wonderful thing starts happening. It's happened in my life. It can happen in your life. It becomes less of a burden because he's now carrying it for you. And you've actually laid it down now. And instead of trying to tug it back off, God, no, that's my pain. I don't want my pain. I'm going to hold on to it. Thank you very much. You actually start letting it go. And you hand it over to him. Maybe there's people here that need to let go of something in the past someone in the past. They don't even have to be present. You can pray to forgive. Here we are, Lord, right now. We're going to bow our heads. Lord, we want to forgive those that have wronged us, that have let us down. Those that maybe we've got a little bit of resentment growing in our hearts, we're going to let it go in letting it go and forgiving those, we realize there's this wonderful exchange, this transformation that can occur and we can go away with your peace. We know your word reminds us not to have bitterness and wrath and anger and and animosity, resentment, strife, slander. We want to put it all away, Lord. And we want to be kind and helpful to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as you, Jesus, has, have forgiven us. And we know how important relationships are to you, that you are willing to give up your one and only son to reconcile us to a loving father, but also then to be able to reconcile ourselves to one another and have true community.